This is Twit. And we have a couple of, uh, our chat room is buzzing away today as always, and we have a couple of questions for you, which people have been waiting for us to get to. So apologies to the people who've been waiting, but I'll actually ask you them both together because I think they're kind of related pretty much, to be honest. So Jojo Dancer uh, asked us, when we were talking about dids, this was, um, who issues the dids? Is it permanent for a user? Can they take it away from us? Should we buy one? Which is interesting. And Gumby, who says, uh, I'm late to the party, but what is the process for dead dids, i.e., what happens when you want to revoke one or abandon it? Um, so let me start with dead dids. Um, mm-hmm. You, if you want to stop using an identifier, you just can. You just use other identifiers in their place. Um, and I'll, in a second, I'll talk about why that's not as inefficient as it sounds. Um, the um, getting a did is a is a process not of getting someone to give you one, but rather of registering a did. Practically speaking, because humans are bad at doing cryptography in our heads, we have to use software to do this. And so you're gonna uh, use an app, for example, that will uh, that will help you get dids. And I say dids on purpose, not just one, um, because there's a, a huge number of, of um, useful cases where you wanna have hundreds or thousands of these things um, so that you can avoid correlation um, with the different folks that you're talking to. If I talk with one friend, I can use uh, one did, and a different friend gets a different one. And, and now uh, there's some additional security advantages of doing so um, and privacy advantages uh, of, of having different ones. Um, you're not gonna have to think about this. Uh, software is gonna help you do this. If you have software that can speak uh, didcom and use dids, et cetera, then it can help you uh, create dids uh, even on the fly and automatically d- during its operation. Um, one of the did methods that's my favorite is actually called a peer did. And uh, the peer dids are designed to work the same way that normal dids do, only rather than registering your did or, or having it recorded on the ledger, then you just pass it to the other party that you're actually directly interacting with. And the, the advantage there is that it's very cheap because the, the, the fastest and the cheapest ledger write is no ledger write. Um, and mm-hmm. and now all the other parties that need that did actually have that information from you. And so um, when you stop using a peer did, uh, then like it just vanishes and, and there's very little overhead that was there in the first place. And so there's not really a cost to abandoning it. Most organizations or, um, or, or uh, or businesses, et cetera, will probably want a ledger recorded did for there's a handful of advantages in those cases, and they don't have the same privacy needs that individuals do. So, mm-hmm. um, so you get one by, uh, by generating a private key that only you know, and um, you're doing this with software, of course, and then you get the did registered on a ledger and, and each did method has its own method of doing so. Some are anchored to Bitcoin, some directly, some are, are anchored via something called a side tree, uh, which is a popular technology. It may be written directly to a ledger, um, not for people, but for organizations uh, like Hyperledger Indy, which is an identity focused ledger specifically for that. So um, you get one by using software that helps you use them is, is the short answer. Um, and the ability to abandon them uh, and, to, and to, to shed them like that is actually part of the design uh, from a personal privacy perspective, um, because uh, then you, you, don't, uh, you don't have a persistent identifier that's used as a magic super cookie to track you everywhere. 